I want to talk to you a little while about faith, and then I'm going to talk to you uh, about healing. We're going to talk about faith. We're going to talk about healing. And then we're going to be healed. How many of you are believing to be healed today? Wow, look at that. This is a big day. I believe with you. So, Father, we thank you for utterance today. We thank you for speaking to all of our hearts exactly what we need to hear from your spirit. And we thank you for healing people. And we give you all the praise and the glory for you're the healer. You can fix anything. I mean, the doctors can say there's no hope and we don't even listen. You can fix it. You can fix it when there's no hope. You can give new parts. You've got parts, Lord. Somebody needs a new kidney. You've got kidneys. Glory to God. Whatever we need, we can have it. I believe in miracles. In Jesus' name, we give God the praise. Amen. Let's talk a little bit about, we're running uh, faith and healing together today since uh, the, usually I do the healing school one day and faith the next, but to this time we're going to run them together and we're going to have a great time because faith comes how? By hearing. By hearing and hearing the word. How many of you, don't feel obligated to raise your hand, but how many of you spend time in the word every day? Hey, that's a good show and praise God. Well, I won't ask how many don't, but I'm telling you, <laughs> you can't afford not to do it. Why is that? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Start out your day every day with the word, prayer and the word. Talk to the Lord every day, spend time in the word. Say, well, I don't have any time. You can take time to at least read a chapter a day. And when you read it, take it in, put it in your mouth, put it in your eyes, let it come out your mouth, and act on it. Amen? Amen. Ken and I have been doing this a long time. We've been on the Word. Since about 1967, we were going on the Word of God. And I, I'm telling you, we have had all kind of situations, mostly uh, in the financial realm, because when you're on television, radio, you know, and you get that million dollar bill every month, well, it kind of is a staggering thing, but not with God. He has seen us through all these years that we have had those awesome television and radio bills. He saw to it that it got done. Why? We believe him for it, and he's willing to do it. Whatever you believe him for that's good and in his perfect will, he'll help you do it. Amen. So this morning, I want to just talk a few minutes about faith, and then we're going to, uh, to also talk about healing. Uh, normally, I'll do this in two, two services, but this is going to be a one big good service. Hallelujah. So I want to talk to you about faith. Here's the thing about faith. Faith takes it. To me, that just made everything so simple about knowing what to do if I'm believing God for something. If I go in prayer, if I, if I go in prayer and I just pray the problem, God, I need this, I need that, I'm hurting, I'm this, I'm that, I don't know what I'm going to do, what have I done to get an answer? Nothing. He already knew the problem. What he needs to hear is the Word of God coming out your mouth, saying, I take my healing, I am healed. Your Word says, I was healed by your stripes and I am healed, hallelujah. I believe, I receive my healing. Now, when you ask God for something, I'm sure I'll cover this again later, but when you ask God for something, you say, I believe, I receive it. You don't just say it, but you take it. From the time you prayed, you asked him, you took it. To receive it is to take it. You consider I have it. From that time on, you say, I have it, I have it. I have it. Well, let's say you're believing God for a healing. And uh, you, you pray, you take your healing. You might even have had hands laid on you, but the pain's still there. What do you do? Do you say, well, it didn't work? No, that's not faith. Faith says, I was healed by the stripes of Jesus. I was healed. Or I believe I received uh, $10,000 to do this thing that we have to do. 
When do you receive it? When you pray. That word means to take. If you don't take it when you pray, you haven't released faith. Amen. And to me, that made it all really simple. So that from that time on, I don't say I don't have it, I don't say I need this, I don't have this, or this is not working. I took it when I prayed. Amen? And that's the bottom line of it. So we're going to talk a little bit about faith. Faith takes it, patience keeps it. Patience keeps it. Glory to God. Faith changes everything. In the Psalm 22, uh, no, Psalm 27, 5 and 6 in the King James. Let's look at that. We're going to just read some good word today. Psalm 20, all of it's good, of course. But this, you know, the word builds you up. It's, it brings faith. Faith comes by hearing by the word. All right, 27 in verse 5 and 6. For, well, let's go to 4. For, for one, thing, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That's a good thing to, to go after, isn't it? We receive it. We receive that reservation when we make Jesus the Lord of our lives. Uh, all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion or his dwelling, is what that means. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me high up on a rock. So he took me out of trouble and he set me up high, hallelujah. Glory to God. And now mine head shall be lifted up above mine enemies round about. You've got people trying to do you in, rob you, do whatever. Here's, here's a good enemy scripture. Now shall you, of course, all this time you're, you're doing the scripture, you're forgiving them for whatever it is. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. So what brought the joy in the time of trouble? Because you believe, you receive when you pray. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what the scripture means in uh, Mark 11. Believe, you receive. When you pray, you take it. That word receive is to take. So here's something you can watch for. If I didn't take it when I prayed, if I didn't take the answer to the problem, if I didn't take the situation under control and believe I have it, then I haven't released my faith. You know, that'll really help you because people pray and they pray the problem and they pray the problem and they pray it over and over and over. They, they just rehearse the problem. But no, you haven't released your faith until you take the answer. So remember that. To receive, believe you receive when you pray, that word receive is take. So if you don't take it, you haven't gotten it supernaturally yet. And I mean, it's a good thing to change and, and quit praying the problem and pray the answer. Uh, faith changes everything. Psalm 27 says, The Lord, will, in a time of trouble, this is a great scripture, 27, 5, and 6, In the time of trouble, the Lord will take me up. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. You say, well, I don't have anybody. Nobody loves me. I mean, no, I don't have this. I don't have that. Everybody's mean to The Lord will take you up. He's the only one that can really do you any good anyway. So in a time of trouble, the Lord will take me up. That's uh, Psalm 27, 5 and 6. And hide me. There's another translation of that, I believe. What would have become of me, Psalm 27, 13 and 14 says, if I had not gone to the Lord. What would have become of me without the Lord's help? Hallelujah. I don't even want to think about that. And then the other thing about faith, one other thing I'd say, this is just a little faith refresher. You've heard most of it. Faith with patience wins. Sometimes, frequently I could say, everything's not instant. You know, people spend 10 or 15, 20 years, 50 years sometimes, messing up their lives, 
and they want to pray one prayer and it's all fixed. Well, that would be great, I'll admit that, but normally it takes a little time in certain circumstances to get things right, amen? But however long it takes, what we did when we prayed has fixed the situation. What did we do when we prayed? We believed, we received the request that we had done, amen? You believe you receive when you pray. We took it when we pray. If you're believing for a healing, you take it when you pray. You don't just keep asking and asking and asking and asking. You're never taking it if you just keep asking and asking, Lord, heal me, Lord, heal me, Lord, heal me, Lord, heal me. No, you got to come to a place where I believe I receive my healing. I take it today. It's mine. And you stand on that word until that healing is all complete. Amen. And from the time you believe you receive it, when you pray, you thank God for it. You just thank God for it. You don't keep asking about it. You just thank God. I, you take it. You base it on Scripture, and you act in your faith, and you take it, and you stay there on that spot of taking it until the thing is done. Amen? You could be believing for a car, a house, a healing, a deliverance of a loved one or whatever, or deliverance for yourself, and that's the way it works. And all the time you're in the process of taking something, you still are putting that Word of God in your eyes and your ears and getting it into your heart and saying what the Word says out your mouth. This is just not a, a one-time situation when you're trying to believe something and you're trying to change things and you're trying to get answers. you gotta, you got to stay in that faith, whatever words you're you're acting on. You've got to stay on that scripture until the thing is done. Amen? You say, well, I want it instant. Well, we all want it instant. And sometimes it happens that way. I'm just saying when it doesn't, this is what you have to do. You have to let patience, this is what the Bible says, let patience have her perfect work. So it's faith and patience. That receives. Now, when we pray, we believe for it to be instant. We, we don't think we're going to have to, and I'm, I mean, this is what we should do. We should believe for it to be instant. But in those cases where it's not instantly done, we keep standing, we keep praying, we're not asking for it, but thanking God and praising Him. I, I have believed I've received. I always think about a house when I, when I uh, preach this about standing, because that was the big thing I believed for in the natural realm. And uh, Ken, I wanted a house. Ken wanted an airplane. He could sleep in the airplane. That'd be all right. But I preferred a house. No, I'm sure he wanted a house too, but his big deal was. <laughs> so uh, we, we began to believe. And, and of course, we, we had to believe God for an apartment when we first started out. And then we kept standing and believing. We found out about the Word of God, we begin to put things on paper. I believe I received this on this day. And we begin to, you know, we'd ask God, which is the proper thing to do, and then we'd thank Him for it. Thank you, Lord, for the new house. Thank you for the new car. Thank you for my son's deliverance. Thank you that, that they're off drugs. Glory to God. Stay in thanksgiving until every single part of that request is finished. We don't quit. Amen? We don't quit. Glory to God. You're believing for healing. You believe you receive your healing. And then you have a pain come back. You don't say, well, I didn't get it. No, you say, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I'll not have that. Pain, you get off my body in the name of Jesus. You've got to learn to talk to things. Say, well, people think we're crazy. Well, you may be crazy, but you'll get your pain gone. <laughs> Amen? No, we're not crazy. We just know God, and we know how he operates. And when we flow in the way he operates, we receive glory to God. So faith changes everything. Uh, I got in my little notes here, it's not for wimps. If you're going to be a quitter, just go on and do whatever you can do by yourself. 
But if you're willing to believe God and stand, let patience have her perfect work, you can get the answer. So it's not for sissies. It's the opposite of fear. Faith has no fear. Faith is the opposite of fear. So if, you're, if you've prayed for something and it's still agitating you and bothering you, you need to release your faith. You've got to take it when you pray. Now that will change your whole prayer life if you'll just get that. Take it. Let's say we're believing God for something that is beyond our natural control, like uh, maybe rebellious children or children that are on drugs or whatever, somebody in the family you're believing for. What do you do? Well, you break the power of the devil over them. You believe you receive their salvation and deliverance. You say good words over them. You, you say, I believe they're delivered. I believe this. I believe that. And you walk in love and you just keep standing for their deliverance. So in other words, when we set out to receive something supernaturally, we stay set out until the answers manifest. Amen? Sometimes it takes a while to do things. Now, we believe God for a house because we weren't, we were not going debt. It took a little while to get a house. But then how long does it take to pay one off? takes a little while too, doesn't it? So we got it. And then we, after we learned how in that first little house, we found out we could believe God for a bigger house. Or you could believe God for, you could have believed God for an old wreck, and now you know how to believe God so you can get you a new car. So whatever it is, faith takes patience sometimes. We love instant things, but it just doesn't always happen. But it does happen. And if we stay with it, it'll, it'll, come to, it'll come to pass. So faith with patience. Patience is that force that does not succumb to trials. It doesn't quit. Patience just keeps standing. It doesn't fall down under bad news. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit, and it is very important. Since just a lot of things don't have instantly happen instantly. So patience, we let patience have her perfect work. But we believe God when we pray, we believe for a right now answer. We, and we take a right now answer and we say, okay, we believe God for this. Uh, say, I'm believing for my healing. I believe I received my healing. I'm taking my healing. Now that's when I took it. Now I'm not going to go say I'm sick after I've taken my healing. If I do, I'm not letting patience have her perfect work. I like everything instant, just like you do. And, and, you know, the more you get the hang of it, the more instant it is. But if it takes a while, I mean, it took me a while to pay cash for a house. It took Ken a while to pay cash for his airplanes, you know. And uh, because we didn't have it, some of you may be like we were, we just didn't have any, any money. But we started believing God, and we started tithing, and we started sowing, and we started saying, faith says, glory to God. And so it took a while to pay cash for things, but how long does it take to pay one off? It takes a while, doesn't it? A lot longer than to believe one in. So don't be, don't be uh, shy about reaching out and stepping out and believing for what you want and what you believe is the will of God. If you want to live in victory, you'll have to live in faith. Amen. Scripture says this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Right. It overcomes the world. That'd be overcoming every lack, every sickness, every problem, everything that the world's got out there to throw at you. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now, Proverbs 6, 2 gives us a little clue. It says in the King James, you are snared by your words. I'm just trying to be practical this morning and give you some situations that we all run into. All of us run into these things. Uh, you are snared by your words. Now, we know that Mark 11 says we can have what we say. But most people are saying what they have even when they're trying to change something. So if you're trying to change your financial situation, don't keep talking financial problems. When you think about it, 
you, when you pray, you go to God, you ask God for what you need, you thank him for it, you praise him for it, and you believe you receive when you pray. We all know that's what we're supposed to do. But do we all do it? Probably not. So when you pray, you take it. That word receive in the Greek is to take it. If you pray and you, and you didn't take it when you prayed, you didn't fulfill that scripture. So when we pray, the, Jesus said to believe you receive when you pray and you'll have it. You look that word up, it means to take it, to take it. If you just pray the problem, you're not getting any supernatural help. But if you'll pray the answer and you'll take the answer and you'll talk the answer, what does that mean when we take it? Well, if, let's say I'm believing for a healing and I go to the Lord and I pray over this situation. I know every sickness is under the curse. I know Jesus bore the curse for me. I know sickness does not belong to me. And then I, I get the healing scriptures like he bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases and by his stripes I was healed. And I take my healing. Lord, standing on this word, I believe I receive my healing. I take my healing. This is how faith works on anything. You take what you need. You take what you desire. And then you talk it. You say, I have it. You don't go around saying, uh, I, I need to, you know, I don't know. We're not ever going to get this. We're not, that's not working. I'm not, I'm not healed. I'm still sick. I'm still hurting. And you know, that's, you didn't take it. When you take it, you have it and you say it. Well, yeah, but the pain's still there. I'm not talking to you about pain. I'm talking to you about taking something that'll get rid of the pain. It's not always instant. I'd sure like it if it was always instant. I don't know why it's not. Probably because I'm not sharp enough to do that. And you may not be either. But I know one thing. If I don't quit, I'll get it. I received it and I'll have it if I don't faint and quit in the long run. And you'll get the hang of that, and it, it seems like it speeds it up, you know. It doesn't take as long to do things, depending on what it is. Believing for a child, and you believe for their deliverance and salvation, you don't just pray one time, and then when they mess up, say, well, it didn't work, or, or just give up and think they're, you know, going to hell in a handbasket. No, you don't do that. You stay with them. Yeah, but my, my kid's 50 years old. Don't quit now. Man, you got a lot of praying on that kid now. We don't ever quit until it's manifested. Amen? Glory to God. So we've, we're persistent when we pray. We stay with it. If you want to live in victory, you will have to live in faith. Vict uh, faith, the Bible says, is the victory, believing God's word, in other words, is the victory that overcomes the world. So we know that it will overcome if we'll stay with it. Everything's not always instant. It would be so delightful if it were. But, but you know, if it were all instant, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have any growth anywhere to grow. So we, we know it, we're going to have to stay with it. We're going to have to let patience have our perfect work. If we want to live in victory... It says in the Bible that faith is the victory that overcomes the world. What does that mean? Anything in the world. Faith is the victory that overcomes any situation in this life. Hallelujah. So we stand on that. Now, if you want to have that, you'll need to know what it is and stay with it. It's in, oh, I don't have that scripture reference. I forget. I think it's in, I don't know where it is. I have to look it up for you. You are snared. Then Proverbs 6, 2 says, you are snared by, the wor by your words. Now, we've learned if we've been around the faith camp very long that our, word, our words are what we believe. That's how we release our faith is with words. That's how Jesus released his faith. He'd say, be healed. He'd say, whatever it was and whatever it is in your life that you need to get rid of, you need to talk to it. You need to ask God to help you, to give you the words to say, and say those words. If you're talking about a sickness or a disease, you speak to the disease and you say to that disease, 
in the name of Jesus, you get out of my life. Get off my body. I am taking healing. I believe I receive, saying I'm taking my healing now in the name of Jesus. If you want to live, oh, well, let me just read this one to you. Faith with patience wins. Faith, sometimes you'll let it go. But if you'll keep that patience, that power that does not succumb to any force, I mean, it just stays with it. If you'll keep that patience undergirding your faith, the answer will come. Say, so, well, I want it fast. We all want it fast. If you'd figure out how to get it faster, to be sure and call me. <laughs> but I have figured this out, how to win, how to get the answer, and it's better, in the, it's better to get an answer next month than not to get an answer at all. Why is it? Why does it take so long? How long did it take you to make that mess you're trying to get out of? <laughs> you know, we might spend years uh, going in debt and buying new cars that we didn't need to, we, we couldn't afford or whatever, buying things we couldn't afford, spending money. Now we're all this debt that we don't have any money to pay for. So you, it's, it could happen, but most likely, you won't go to prayer one morning and ask God to pay off the debt and the next morning it be gone. it's gone. If it is, you call me and then you come to a seminar on how you did it. Because I don't know. But the thing is, with patience, if you let patience, that force that does not quit, does not succumb, if you let patience have her perfect work, it'll come to pass. Glory to God. So it's better later than you wanted it than never happening. And the more you know, the more you do this, the more you get into the faith uh, flow, and the more you learn about it, the easier it gets. If you want to live in victory, you'll have to live in faith. You're snared by the words of your mouth. You are snared by your words. When faith is released, you take the answer if, to make this work. You believe you receive the answer. Okay, I'm believing for this. I believe I receive it. I take that house. I take that car. I take that healing. I have it. Now, I can't go around talking that I don't have it if I've taken it. I've just nullified my faith if I do that. Faith takes the promise, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says. And remember in Mark 11, the great healing where uh, we learned, most of us, we certainly did, how to use our faith. I've got so many uh, margin writings on this one, it's hard to read, but Mark 11, let's just look at that a, a few minutes. You remember Jesus was with his disciples, he walked by and he was hungry and there was a fig tree. And so he stopped and he, he, he was gonna get figs off that tree to eat but there were no figs on the tree. It, it was the season for them. There should have been figs on the tree, but there were no tree. I assume it, I believe it indicates it was a season anyway. There weren't any figs on the tree. And so he said, Jesus must have been really hungry, or he was either hankering after a fig. I don't know. He said to that tree, he didn't say it to the devil. He said it to the tree. No man eat fruit again of you forever. That's all he said. So then the next time when they came by there, shortly after that, the tree had had time to dry up. It was, it was, the fig tree was dried up from the roots. That'll give you another clue about how to deal with problems. Go to the root of the thing. Don't go to the periphery of it. Go to the root of it. He spoke to the fig tree. It dried up from the roots. He said, no man eat fruit of you again forever. And that dude began to shrivel up. And no man ate fruit again forever off that tree. Now that's the way we do situations in our lives. We say to them, you're not coming in here. We'll not have that. Whatever it is, we, we find scriptures to cover it, the problem, and we stand on that word, and we say, we'll not have this in our home anymore, or I'll not have sickness in my body, or certain things happen anymore. 
I'll not have it. And then if you, you know, if you begin to uh, pray, talk the problem, you begin to say, get in fear about it. You think, you know, you're afraid it's coming back and uh, you're, you're opening the door for it to come back. It'll come back. Sickness and disease will come back. So what we have to learn to do, and this is not just a mental thing, you've got to get the word in your eyes and your ears that, so that it gets down in your heart. It's the word in your heart that works for you. And it comes up, and, and then it'll, it'll get, come up into your thinking processes, and it'll come out your mouth, and it'll go after whatever. If it's something bad, it'll go after it. Stop it. Something good you're believing for, it'll go after it. Provide it. But it is, it's what's in your heart that determines the effect of your words or the authority of your words. Why? Because that's what faith is. So we say this. It's not what we know that counts. And we remember, you, it, the fig tree is a good example to remember and to even look back and read again and again uh, to keep your words right. That fig tree didn't dry up instantly. Your problem might not go away instantly. Sometimes it does, and that's certainly the way we prefer it. But whether it is gone today or next week or next month, my words say it's gone. My words say I have it. My words say the symptom of, the words say, my words say I am healed by his stripes I was healed. There may be a, 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 a part of it left. There may be a symptom left. I'm not moved by that. I'm believing I've received my healing. I took it when I prayed. That's a, now when you get that, what I, I've already said this once, but when you get that receive means to take, it's easier to put this into operation. If you didn't take it when you prayed, you didn't receive it. If you didn't pray, when you prayed, you didn't take it and you kept saying and talking and the problem and saying, I don't know what we're gonna do. You got it from the place of prayer. Somebody called you and asked, well, how's that going? Has that situation got any better? No, it, it's, just, it's just the same. Nothing's happened. You got to remember, you're the one in authority in this situation. It's your deal. And you have to give place for Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit to move in that situation with your words and with your actions. Amen. We don't get in fear. We believe God. If we're believing for healing, we believe God. When we pray, we take our healing. 30 minutes later, maybe the pain comes back. Don't be moved by it. You've taken it. It's, it's working. Yeah, but it's still there. It's working if you'll keep it there. If you'll keep your faith on the, on the move, it'll keep working. But if you give up and say, well, I thought I had maybe, I thought maybe I'd gotten it, but I, I guess I didn't. Well, you just, you just have to go back to square one. How long do we stand? However long it takes. How long do we have to be positive in faith words? However long it takes if we want results. And of course, the more you do it, the more proficient you become at it and the more natural it is for you to speak faith words and not words of unbelief and fear and doubt. So it's a way of life. It's like learning a language. I mean, you don't know how to talk from the first day in class, but you learn. You can learn that faith language too and how to operate in faith and receive anything from God. Mark 11, 12 through 14, when Jesus talked to the fig tree, it, it, nothing, nothing happened that you could see. You look in the scripture and it says, the fig tree withered up from the roots. Well, Jesus spoke to the fig tree, said no man eat fruit of you again forever. And then they went on their journey. They kept going wherever they were going. You couldn't tell. The fig tree still looked great, green, healthy. But when they came back, it was a different situation. I don't know. I don't recall if it tells us how long they were gone. But it, when they came back, the fig tree was withered up. Where from? 
the roots, the fig tree, went, the, the words went to the roots. And immediately when Jesus spoke to that tree, I am certain that the roots began to dry up. But it didn't happen instantly. It took a little while. And they didn't just stand around there for days. They just passed on by us. And so that's the way it is in our life. When we take after a, a situation that we're trying to change, we, we speak to the root of the thing, the heart of the thing. We command uh, the answer to come, and we command this to be changed and that to be changed. And then we stay with that. We don't quit. We don't quit until it's done, it's finished. The, the, the answer is there. The pain is gone. You're living in the house. You're driving the car. You have that child you've been believing God for. Amen. So you stay with it. What is it? Now remember this. I've said it once or twice maybe already. But it says, let patience. You tack this on to Mark 11. Let patience have her perfect work. Patience is that force that does not succumb to anything. Patience just keeps going. And you look up the definition of patience, and it's really a, a great encouraging thing. It just stays with it. I believed I received my healing. I am healed. Of course, Satan will come and tell you you're not healed, and, and uh, lots of your good friends may tell you that too. But what are we moved by? We're moved by the Word of God. Amen? We let patience have her perfect work. Uh, for instance, in our situation, you've probably heard me tell this story before, but you know, women like houses. Men like machinery. And uh, what I wanted was a house. I mean, I'm believing God for a house here. And it took a while, actually, to, to, to do it. It took a while to pay cash for a house because I, I didn't want just a log house. I didn't want just a project house. I wanted a house. <laughs> so it's going to take a, wh a while to build a house. And, uh, and you know what? We had places to live in the meantime. We, 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 we were never on the street. We always had a nice place to live. But it wasn't the house that I wanted, that I was believing for. But it, in a, it took a while, but I'm living in that house. Yeah. Now, was it worth it? to go through the faith process to get to the absolute thing that you want? Yes, it's worth it. And besides that, it's the only way you're going to get some things by faith because there, it, it depends on what you're believing. You know, you may be believing for uh, cancer to be cured. Well, you can't just go get that done in the doctor's office. I mean, you're going to have to believe God for it. You're going to have to stand for it. So when we learn, like we learn to stand for natural things in that house, but at the same time we learn to stand for physical situations, for all kind of situa child situations. Uh, once you get the hang of letting patience have its perfect work, you can get anything done supernaturally. That's the, that is the will of God. You'll need to have it based it on Scripture. You're believing for a child that's out in the world and going crazy, you don't just give up. You break the power of the devil over. You believe you receive their salvation. And when you believe you receive, now what does that mean? Receive, you take it. You take their salvation by faith and ask the Lord to put uh, laborers across their path or ask the Lord to get somebody to help them get delivered of drugs or whatever the situation is. And it, and it might take a while or it might be quick. But as long as you get that kid in good shape and delivered, it's all worth it, however long it took. Amen. So that's why the scripture says, let patience. Patience is there, in other words. It's, it'll work if you'll let it. We let patience. We don't quit. We don't give up. We don't say contrary to what we're believing God for. We let patience have its perfect work. That power that does not succumb to any situation. It, it, patience, will, patience will stay with it until it's absolutely finished. Glory to God. 
It's the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience. So it's in us if we'll release it and let it stay and not take it back. Faith takes the promise. The fig tree was withered up from the roots. It's not what we know that counts, but what we actually do. That's true in the Word of God and in our walk with the Lord. People know a lot. A lot of people, you might not be one of them, but a lot of people know a lot more than what they're willing to do. Now, when we're willing to know what's in the Bible, we spend time in the Word, we find out the will of God, we see what it says, and we know Scripture and verse. When we spend time in the Word and we know what it says, then we, have, we stand on it until it's finished. We don't quit. Faith, the Scripture says, is the victory in 1 John 5, is the victory that overcomes the world. Now, I take that to mean anything in the world, any problem, any situation, any sickness, any, anything in the world can be overcome by faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Now, what is faith? Well, faith is believing what you see in the Word of God and what God says about the situation more than what you see out here in the world or in the natural. You may not see, you know, when Jesus came by, the fig tree withered up, but when he spoke, you couldn't see any change. What happened to that fig tree? Jesus' words went right to the root of that tree and began to dry it up. Your faith words, your faith prayers, your faith words that you're saying over situations maybe that seem impossible will go right to the root of the problem of that thing and get it out of your life. You say, well, I just don't see any way. Well, that's why we have miracles. Amen. Miracles you can't see any way. You don't know where they're coming from or where they're going. And you just can't get one by asking every once in a while or, or thinking a big thought or whatever. But miracles happen. Healings happen. Tumors disappear. Cancers come out of people's body. Blind eyes get opened. But it takes faith, and it takes the power of God at work, and it might take patience or whatever. And people get out of debt. Did you know people can get out of debt? Glory to God. took us 11 months to get out of debt. We, we didn't have anything to show for it. I mean, we didn't have... We were living in a little project-type house with early Goodwill and Kenneth's mother's old furniture, maybe some of it. And uh, I started believing God for a house. I wanted a house. Kid wanted an airplane. He could sleep in the airplane, but I didn't want to. I wanted a house. And we, we were in that situation. We weren't get, Our monthly income wasn't very much, and we were just starting out, just starting out, almost right at the time we started ministry. We were already broke when we started ministry. <laughs> and we were already in debt when we started ministry. And plus, we didn't know much. So, but we did know some things. And so we believed God. We sat at that little table I bought at the Goodwill or the Salvation Army or somewhere and painted it. It looked pretty good after I got through with it. We sat at that little table in Tulsa in the little project house, and we believed God to get out of debt. I mean, you know, looking back, we didn't have much debt, but it looked monumental to us at the time. And so we still, I, I've forgotten now, a few thousand, maybe I've forgotten what it was, but it's a few thousands a lot when you don't have but a few dollars, you know what I mean? And so we, we prayed, we believed God. Well, from 11 months, and oh, here's another key to getting out of debt, quit borrowing money. <laughs> don't forget that part. We quit charging. In those days, you charged, you know, with every kind of store you had a charge account. So we quit that. We got those paid off eventually. Everything was done. And within 11 months, we were out of debt. Now, we didn't have a nice house. We didn't have a, we had a car that ran. That was it. And we, you know, but we were out of debt. That's what we were believing for. We found out we could live debt free. And you know, some of those things that we had to believe for in those days, 
weren't any harder than the big things that we had to that we did believe for in later days office buildings property airplanes payroll but those little things back there when we started they looked awfully big to us at the time but neither the the little things or the big things were any challenge for the word of god hallelujah and i'm going to tell you we've lacked for nothing nor do we expect to all the days of our lives because we know how to believe we receive when we pray and it comes to pass. Now, the, we've already talked about patience a little bit, but it is important because it, it'll hold you steady. Patience, the fruit of the Spirit, so it's in us. We yield to patience. When you're, you're on a project, you're believing God for a healing or or something in the natural realm like a house or a car or, or maybe the salvation of a, your family or whatever. You believe you receive. You ask the Lord for it. You get the word out. You stand on the scriptures. You ask the Lord for it. And you believe you receive it when you pray. What does that mean? Well, take what I said about receive. It means to take. So you take it when you pray. You take it when you pray. If you pray and you didn't take it, if you pray and you don't have it when you get through, by taking it in the Spirit, you didn't release your faith. But if you take it when you pray, and then from that time on you thank the Lord and you praise Him for it, thank you, Lord, for Let's just say you're believing for a car. Uh, thank you, Lord, for my new car. Thank you, Lord, for my car. And then you go about, and, you know, the devil tells you it's not working, and you don't even, you, you just... Tell him to get out and mind his own business. And you just keep thanking the Lord for that car. Lord, where is that car? Would you show me where that car is? What car should I what car should I believe for? Find out exactly what you believe for. And then you just stay with it. I'm not talking about borrowing money for a car. I'm, that's easy. I'm talking about when you want to pay cash for something. Believe God for it. If, if that's in your heart, you don't have to. You can go on and be in debt if you want to. I'm just telling you how to get out of debt if you want to. And I'm going to give you this testimony. It's better out than in. <laughs> Glory to God. So we have faith in God. It says, here's some things about Mark 11. I can't read all of them because my writing's so little on this margin, but I'm going to just read you some of these things because it, it'll help you. Believe and say, and you shall have. Uh, the, uh, you sh uh, working, you're working on the image in your heart. So you believe, I believe I receive uh, the job, the right job for me, the right job for this family. I believe I receive. Well, see yourself with the right job. Don't see yourself broke and, and you know, I don't know what to do and I don't have anywhere to work and I'm just going to sit around here and watch TV. No, get in the Word. See yourself with it, whatever it is. If it's healing, see yourself well and up and running and doing what you want to do. See yourself. If it's a car, you're believing something natural, see yourself in that new car. Go down and look at a new car. See yourself in that new car. Okay, I see this car. This is the one I want. So... I'm going to be, if that were me, I would take a, I would try to get a picture of that car. If I didn't have a picture, I'd just remember what it looked like and I'd remember what it was and I'd remember all the details to say, this is what I want. I want to, I, I believe I receive a new so-and-so and so-and-so. I'm taking, what am I doing? I'm taking that car and I'm basing it on the word of God because Jesus said, believe you receive when you pray and you'll have it. So I'm believing I receive when I pray. I have that car from now on. I see myself driving it. Man, I'm looking good in it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I took it when I prayed. You know, I'll get it. I'll get it. You'll get it. But it might not be overnight if you're in a situation where that's, you know, you just can't write a check for it. It might not be overnight. But if you won't quit, God won't quit. And that's how things, everything in our lives, our office buildings, our property, our uh, home, our, the cars, the vehicles, everything, the payroll, my, my. It's got to be, it's, it's all been by faith. You know, but we don't wait until 
the 15th and payrolls do and then go pray. No, we believe we receive all of those obligations, all of those things met. We believe we receive uh, that every person on our staff gets paid, hallelujah. Before the 15th, we believe that. That's the way you do things. You know, you just become a faith person. People think you're, you know, they might make fun of you. They'll, they might say dumb things about you, but they'll all be wanting to ride in your new car. <laughs> and they'll be wanting to know, how did you get this? How did you do this? And besides that, the big gun and all that is that faith pleases the Lord. Amen. All the time you're believing and standing, you're pleasing the Lord. He knows you're, you're believing and standing. You're not being uh, moved. You're not quitting. You're not giving up. But your faith is standing. How do you keep strong faith? You keep it on the Word of God. You keep your eyes and in that word, you keep your ears listening to that word. It took Ken, it took us 11 months to get out of debt the first time that we were, you know. But in the meantime, when we, we hadn't been married all that long, and we were Kennedy enrolled as a freshman in college at 30 years old at ORU, and uh, we had a little rent house and we had an old car. And we, we uh, began to you know, we, we, we're, uh, we were also in the place where Brother Hagen was having seminars every quarter. And he would have a 10-day seminar. And during that 11 months that we lived in Tulsa that we were believing God like this, he had, I believe it was four of those while we were there, four 10-day seminars. And we did not miss a meeting. We would slip and slide if it was icy. We would get in our old car and we'd slide over to North Utica Street. How many of you were in those meetings? Anybody? Gee, I feel sorry for you. They were great meetings. <laughs> and especially learning about faith when you needed everything you could think of. Ken and I didn't miss a meeting. We went twice a day. Well, it, it's possible we missed a meeting over some unforeseen thing, but I don't remember missing a meeting. And we, it'd snow, it'd sleet, you know, the roads would be awful. We'd go to that meeting, glory to God. See, we were after the Word of God. We had found out. We had enough spiritual sense by that time to know this is the answer to everything we need. Healing, house, car, family, whatever it is, faith is the answer to it. And we went after it. We bought what few tapes he had. I don't even know if he had any, but as soon as he got the tapes, which were the real to real tapes, you know, in those days, then we moved to cassettes. And then we, you know, we just, we, we listened to the word. We found out from him uh, how faith works. And we have gone after lots of things, lots of things, lots of, Hired lots of people, paid them every payroll, hallelujah, with faith that we learned back in 1967 when we had an old car and we, did, we lived in a little project house and we had, a, our, we had just odds and ends of furniture, some Ken's mother had given us, some I bought at the Goodwill and painted, and, you know, whatever, and Ken was had enrolled as a 30-year-old freshman at ORU because that's where the Lord told him to go. And so the first day he went up there, or the second, right the first time he went up there, he heard that Brother Roberts was looking for a pilot. Well, Ken was a qualified commercial pilot at that time. And he got the job of flying Oral Roberts, co-pilot. He was a co-pilot. He wasn't the main pilot. He was a co-pilot. But on every trip, they had to have Kenneth go. He got to see miracles. He saw all those things while, while those miracles were still happening. And people jumping up of wheelchairs and all kind of things and salvation. He was with Brother Roberts. I was at home with the children <laughs> with an old car to drive. And not very much money. But you know what? I had a Bible too. And I spent time in the Word and I took care of my children. Ken would come home for a while and then he'd go back out. 
But the point is, it doesn't matter where you start with faith. If you'll stay with it, you will get healed, you'll prosper, you'll get that house you need, the car you need, you'll get your children straightened out. Don't give up on those children. You break the power of the devil over them, you believe you receive, if they're out in the world, believe you receive their salvation and deliverance, and just stay before God thanking them. Thank you, Lord, for the salvation of my daughter. Thank you, Lord, for the salvation of my son. I believed I've received it. Put labors across their path. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever it is, faith will change it to the way you want it to be. But where does faith come from? Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If you're not going to spend time in the Word, you're not going to have great faith because that's the source of our faith. Amen? So every day, just because life is what life is, every day you spend time in the Word. Every day I spend some time in the Word. You don't have to spend hours and hours, but spend time in the Word of God. And when you read it, take it and, and apply it. When, you, when you're corrected, apply it. Hallelujah. You see something in there you're missing, apply it and get rid of it. Get, fi fix it. So Jesus came back by and saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold, look at the fig tree. Behold the fig tree which you have cursed and it's withered away. And Jesus, I'm sure Jesus wasn't surprised. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Or the margin reads, Have the faith of God. We have an opportunity not to just have faith in God, but to have the faith of God who said, let there be, and there was. Glory to God. Who created everything in this world out of faith. Everything you see, it, its root had, it had roots in the faith of God's word. Let there be light. Let there be well, what we need to do in our own lives is say, let there be money in my bank. Let there be a good job for me. Let me know where that good job is. Don't ever, if you're in trouble financially and needing a job and all that, don't ever talk doubt and unbelief. You're just digging. You're just the same as going out there. You're in a hole, and you're in a hole up to here and you start talking doubt and unbelief, and it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. You're digging. You're digging. We'll never have that car. We, we just can't find. Well, how are you doing? Well, we're not doing so good. We've been looking for a job, and we haven't found one. We don't, we don't have a job now. We haven't found one. You're getting in deeper and deeper. No. Say, well, we believe we receive a job and we, we're standing on the Word of God. Hallelujah. Now, what did you do when you believed you received the job? Well, according to the, what that word means to receive, you asked the Lord for the right job. And then you said, thank you, Lord. I take it. See, to receive is to take. I take that job. I believe you'll show me where it is. I want the one that you picked for me. You show me exactly where it is. Then what do you do? Well, you pray and you read. Not pray about that, but pray in the Spirit. Yes, amen. Say, so, well, I don't know how to pray in the Spirit. Well, don't let the day go by until you receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit because that's where power is. You just can't get it by yourself. You, you, you can, you've got to have that Spirit of God on the inside of you, talking to you, teaching you, giving you direction, saying, go over there to that place. And I forgot the situation Ken might tell you when he comes, but there was a situation that he ended up in back in those early days. And it was something to do, oh, it was something to do with the draft. And he, he uh, the Lord told him to go to this place and do a certain thing. And, and he had forgotten about it. And he had, I mean, he had forgotten about, he, he had forgotten about not going. This was before he had forgotten what the Lord, and then the Lord said, go over there. So he went over there, and if he had not gone, if I, if I get it wrong, he can correct it, because I wasn't the one being drafted, so I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, if he had not gone over, 
to that draft play, board place, whatever you call them. I've never been in the mil. I've never been in the military. <laughs> this is so important. Okay. That I, I wanted to. I was okay. like, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> but, but what you're saying right here is is, is so absolutely vital that I wanted to take some more detail Good. at the way that came to pass because. At that time, I knew zero about really hearing the voice of the Lord and, re and really being led by the Spirit. But we were obedient. We had accepted the call of God, and we were headed to yeah, Tulsa. That's right. So since we were doing our best to follow after him, he did his best to see to it that we heard his voice. So uh, we had everything ready to leave. I had gone to town to close out all of the, these are, for, for all of you that don't know anything but the internet, you ain't never had to live like this. To close out <clears throat> the water bill, to close out the gas company connection, close out, you had to go to downtown and you had to go to each one of their offices, go in there <clears throat> and close that account. So that's what I was doing. <clears throat> and um, I was headed back out to my mother's house. We'd sold our little old place and, and we were, I was headed back home. And I just had this, this inward agitation and that something here wasn't, wasn't finished. And, and I, I finally said, what is it, Lord? He said, go by the Selected Service Bureau. That's a draft board. And um, when I, I separated from the United States Army, 1968, and uh, my classification at that time was 1Y, which meant it was a, 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 an open end where they could call me back anytime they decided to. Now, I won't go into all of that, <clears throat> but that was my classification. But I've forgotten about that. I wasn't thinking anything about that. And um, this is 1960, well, actually this was 1966, just before, in December of 66. Well, I got, out of the, I got out of the service in 1958. So I, I've, I've forgotten all that. Anyway, I went back in there and I said, uh, I didn't know what to say to the woman. And she said, may I help you? I said, um, I'm... I'm going to, um, I'm going back to school. I'm going to college, Old Roberts University, and I'm entering the ministry. And I wanted to check, I, want, I, I would like for you to check my, my uh, files and my service record, and, let, and, and, and I, I want to see what, what's going on here. I just believe the Lord sent me by here. She said, okay, hold on a minute. She went and got it. She said, did you say the Lord sent you by here? I said, yes, ma'am, I believe he did. She said, I believe he did too. <laughs> she said, you're, you're to be called up here. You remember what was happening in 1967, 1966, 1967? Vietnam. Now, it was on my records there all of my, my uh, flight time, my records and so forth that I learned how to fly after I came out of the service. But all of that, of course, was, was on there. And, and I had some friends that had had this happen to them. They got called up and, and so then somebody con contacted them and said, uh, you don't want to get, you, you don't want to get back in that mess, do you? No, I sure don't. Well, why don't you come fly for us? We, 
we have a service airline turned out to be the CIA and all that kind of mess. I don't know that that's what was happening to me, but there sure was a, you know, there was a possibility that that was what it was. She said, now you're going back into ministry. I said, yes, ma'am. And uh, she said, okay. <laughs> she said, I can fix this. She, she took my service record and she got this big stamp it said 4F. Wow. 4F is no longer acceptable for military service. <laughs> Man, she, she stamped that like she is killing a rat. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. One page right after another. Man, she shut that and said, go on, Mr. Copeland, go on to school. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And she was having what little, we didn't even know how faith worked back then. No, we didn't. But but we had we were obeying God. And so faith was in there. And we were obeying him. So faith was working. Faith was functioning. And this same thing, Gloria mentioned this a little bit earlier. The same thing the day I registered for school. We, we still, I didn't, at that time, I wasn't really aware of Brother Hagin. I hadn't heard any of his tapes. But on registration day, um, I got all registered up, and, and uh, I, was, I was leaving the, the building and walked out the, the front there of the LRC, and, uh, and my feet stuck to the ground. I had this happen twice in my ministry. Both times it was while I was a student at Old Roberts University. My feet stuck. I, I couldn't move them. I said, sir, what is it? Well, see, now, instead of sticking my feet to the concrete, he just says, Kenneth, go back in there. Well, when you're aware and you're listening for your name all the time, Anybody in here that flies airplanes, you're listening for that tail number all the time. You can hear chatter on the radio, and you're hearing, you know, listening to a thing they're saying, they, and, and they call your number. Man, you hear it. That's the way you have to be listening for the voice of the Lord, and faith will do that. And so, but I, I, was, I said, what is it, Lord? He said, I want you to go back and go up to the sixth floor. And I, I said, okay, and my feet came undone. So I went back in there. Well, they had already warned us that the sixth floor was the main offices and students were not allowed up there. So I went in and... Uh, I got in the elevator, I pushed the button to the fifth floor because I'm not allowed to go to the sixth floor. I thought, well, maybe I just heard it wrong or something. Got up there, and, and you have to remember this, or you at that time wasn't but three years old, and, and <laughs> the door opened, and this whole floor was empty, which became, later became the, the library, but there wasn't anything in there yet. And I looked, and I thought, what is this? He said, I didn't say the fifth floor. I said the sixth floor. I said, Lord, that's the Vatican. I can't go up there. They, they, he said, they work for me. I told you to go up there. I said, yes, sir. So I went up there, and the elevator opened on that floor. The elevator doors just opened up, and you walked right out the door into the reception area there in the in, Brother Roberts' office was here. Dr. Messick's office was here. Ron Smith's office was over here. And Ruth Rooks was at her desk. Of course, I didn't know any of these, these people at that time. And I walked up there. I didn't know what I was going to say. And I wanted out of there so bad. Because I just, you know. And I said, um, <clears throat> I understand that uh, this ministry uses airplanes, and I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a commercially rated pilot. I have all my, my ratings and so forth. And I'm, I just registered as a student today, and I need all the help I can get. <laughs> I just, I, 
I just wanted you to know. Well, I, I, I wanted to just turn around and leave. And um, so uh, Ms. Rooks said, uh, she said, well, wait a minute. I, I want you to tell that to Dr. Messick. And he, he walked out there and said, I told him. And, and he looked at me like I just got out from under a bus. Could, you know, he said, huh. And he's kind of a grumpy fellow anyway. And so he just, huh, like that and turned around and walked off. I said, well, I want to thank you very much. She said, that's fine. I turned around. Brother Roberts had walked up behind me. And I didn't know he was there. You know, he's that much taller than me. And um, <laughs> he, he said, I'm Oral Roberts. I literally said, ha, 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 He might as well have said, I'm God. <laughs> but now notice, no, notice now what Gloria was, was talking about. See, faith was functioning. The Spirit of God was leading me, but faith was functioning. Glory is at home praying. Faith is working. Faith is working. He said, did I understand you to say you're a commercial pilot? I said, yes, sir. He said, can you handle our airplane? I said, yes, sir. He said, two weeks ago, I started to hire a new co-pilot, but he said, the Spirit of God said, no, I have a student coming that I want to have the job, and you're my man. Now, what, what is so important about these two illustrations, God put us right where we needed to be even though we didn't know where it was. See, she was talking about the, uh, the job that you need. And at this time, we didn't know about faith either. How no, we didn't know anything. We, we did, all we did, We're just two dummies. All going we on. did was believe, <laughs> all we did was obey God. That's right. Now, when smart. you, oh, and it took faith to do that. Because he told me to do that three yeah, years I before, did. and I, 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 just, I, didn't want, I just didn't do it. And it, it got me into trouble. But anyway, I, when I finally did obey, I, it, it put us in that place where he was maneuvering Yeah, that's us. the word right there. Met putting you right in the place where you needed to be at that moment. Now, how does that work, Brother Copeland? The dominating power of the Word of God. The prophet Micah said, a virgin will have a baby in Bethlehem. 715 years later, that came to pass exactly as he said it. The, the Word of God one little verse in the Bible. The Word of God dominated armies, kingdoms, kings, people, things, situations for 715 years, right down to the fact that when the Caesar called for a tax count, and they got up and went to Bethlehem, and she had a baby right on the spot. And God planned out your and mine and Gloria's lives before the foundation of the world. And if we get over on that track, get over on that road, don't be the least bit concerned if you are praying and you believe you receive direction from the Lord about where you are supposed to be. I mean, you may have the best job you ever had in your life, but if you're not where you're supposed to be, you're way short of what the best job you ought to have. Don't ever be concerned right. about just saying, no, the Lord, the Lord said I'm supposed to go to such a place, and that's where we're going. See, that's what we did in 66. So, he will maneuver you. He will put you right 
on time, right on the spot. If you take care of the things that you are required by command to do. Number one, you have to start tithing. That's not optional. That's been since the Garden of Eden. It's been God's way of doing things. So you take care of that. Yeah, but I don't have any money. Wonder why. <laughs> so you take care of that. You make the concrete, absolute decisions. You're going to walk in love, and you're going to keep the commandment of love. You're going to walk in forgiveness, whether you like it or not, or whether you feel like it or not. The commander-in-chief, Lord Advocate General of the body of Christ has said we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength, love our neighbors ourself, and love the brethren even as he loved the brethren. Amen. Amen. Now, he commanded that. So we're, we're commanded to do that. And that's what we do. We have, that's not optional. All of these things depend on that. Why? Because faith works by love. That's right. Jesus said, on those commands, they asked him, said, which is the greatest commandment? He said, love the Lord your God, love your neighbor as yourself. On those commandments hang all the law and the prophets. It all hangs on it. It depends That's good. on it. All doubt is fear dependent. Doubt has to have fear or it can't function. All faith is love and word dependent. No love, no faith. No word, no faith. Amen. So you put things in order. I am yours to command, sir. And then do what he tells you to do. Amen. I mean, there were people on 9-11. I'm thinking about the guy that got up that morning and Dan and Ann Stratton, he's a member of Dan's church, and, uh, the, and this man has ne never, ever late to anything. And uh, the people in Dan's church, um, almost all of them were, were either worked in or commuted through the World Trade Center. And he had been teaching for days and days and days on hearing the voice of the Lord. Not one member of his church, not one member of their families were even touched by that. And there was one man, member of his church, that walked out of the middle of that, of the crashing of those towers. Well, he walked out of there and there was no ash on him. <laughs> Completely bubbled in by the blessing of the Lord. Anyway, this fellow got up that morning and his little daughter said, Daddy, uh, let, let, let's stop. Let's, let's stop and get something to eat. And for that morning, he, he, if I remember this correctly, he didn't usually take her to school, but something had happened that day. He's taking her to school. Yeah. And he thought, I never get to have breakfast with my baby. I'm going to stop and do this. And Dan told me, he said, this guy's never late, man. He's never late to church. He's never late to work. You can set your clock by him. Thank you. But that morning, he's late. Praise God. That morning, he was late. God was maneuvering. Yeah. Now, here, here's something else I want to tell you. God spoke to everybody in the World Trade Center. And I heard, Everybody. Ken, there were a number of testimonies that I have from different oh, places yeah. that that same thing happened. There should have been, there should have been 
upwards of 25,000 people killed. Or somebody in that place. was just felt like they should go a different route. Yeah. Or, you know, things like that. And there were people that started back in when they said everything is secure. And some of them said, no, no, no. Some just told me, no, no, I ain't going back in there. It ain't good yet. Now, God told everybody. Yeah. And those that listened got out. It isn't that he isn't speaking. He is speaking all the time to every breathing human being on the face of this planet. He is talking all the time. There are those that will listen. And even, even those that don't know God, they get a hunch. Now, that so-called, what, that, what the world calls a hunch is a witness in their spirit. That's what we know it as. Seemed like one of the people just got hungry for a certain thing. Yeah. <laughs> Going to work. It just, and it took them away from their, where others, they were supposed to go. Others actually heard the voice of God. One, one man that went, that went to Dan's church, he, he, was, he started in the door at the World Trade Center where his office was. He started in the door and he heard, run! Yeah. He just took off running. That's Nothing right. had happened. He just took off it. I mean, he took off like his coat was on fire and just ran and ran down into the subway and boom. Hallelujah. What a way to live. What a way to live. The faith way Thank of you, living. Thank you, Lord. Glory Hallelujah. To God. Praise God. Praise oh, God. Man. I was driving down the highway and, and I heard the Lord say, I, I, I heard the Lord say, get over, he's hot. And I thought, wow. But w before I had time to think about it, I just, I was coming up this hill and I just took the wheel and just drove over to the, to the shoulder. Just as I did, this guy came up over the hill on the wrong side of the highway, whew, just went by me within inches of my car. Now, what did he mean? It, he's hot. That took me a while. <laughs> I went to the Lord and I said, um, what was that all about? He said, I was talking to you about the devil. He's mad and, and infuriated because you have been destroying his work and his household and he's out to kill you. Be determined to be instant to obey. Don't argue with it. Well, Brother Copeland, what if I miss it? So? I'd rather miss so it. So you never missed it before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Be determined that you're going to obey. Hallelujah. Praise amen. Can you Thank say you. amen? amen. Thank, you, Thank you, sweetheart, for letting me yeah. butt in. Well, listen, I'm not through with you yet. All right. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to read some few of the healing scriptures and then we, uh, we're going to release our faith and I want you here to, to uh, help us. I can do that. Okay. All Amen. Right. All right. So uh, we, we were reading about faith, how it works. Uh, I'll just give you Romans 10, 14 through 17 says, faith hears. 11, Mark 11, 23, faith believes the word. Faith speaks and takes it. And then it says this about your words. Uh, Psalm 139, 1 through 4. It says in that scripture that God knows every word we speak. Mm, 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 so mm. now if you're believing for healing, you don't need to be going around saying, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm hurting. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going broke or whatever. Last night we talked about the heavenlies. In the world beyond the speed of light, the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. where all things are. Faith functions at light speed. Our spirit man that's been born again is functioning beyond the speed of light just like God is. God is light. 
We are children of the light. We're born of the light. We walk in the light as he is in the light. Is that why you can't see our spirit unless it's slowed down? That's right. Yeah. You can't see spiritual things unless it slows down below the speed of light. Get into the matter. Like realm. when somebody's body, le spirit leaves their body and they go to heaven, you don't yeah. see it. Now, they can turn around and see you, but you can't see them because they're functioning their, their molecular structure and, and they're... They are functioning at a speed that our eyes can't see. Now, Adam could see that. He could see in both realms because he's like God until he fell below and no longer could see in that spirit realm. Now, your healing is in there. And, and, and all the things are there. And faith penetrates that veil at the speed of light. And as you confess the word, and as faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and love begins to rise and flush out fear, and you begin to speak in that realm. You can't see your words, but I'll guarantee you the devil can see them, hmm. and he can hear them and they break him down. He has to fall on his knees and, and flee at those powerful words because they're filled with God's faith. Right. And so as you're speaking that, then on the inside of your spirit, all, all, there's no time nor distance in the spirit realm. And while you're doing these things, while you're saying these things, God knows every word. Faith receives. Faith takes. Faith speaks. Faith possesses. Yes, it does. And what happens, Gloria came into me and she said that she'd been, she'd been messing with that house for 30 years. Doesn't cost, it, doesn't cost anything to mess with it. Well, no. She said to me one day, she said, Kenna, I, this, this thing just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I can't see any way to cut it back. I the said, longer it took, the bigger I it said, got. Hey, hey, girl, <laughs> hey, what, what, don't try to cut it back. It's a dream. Dream on. Now, what's happening? She's building that house in the heavenlies. See, it's on the inside of her. She's building that house in the heavenlies. The angels can see it. They function in that world. And this is part of their job. Now, as you're speaking, she came to me one day and she said, uh, we, we need to take some time and pray over this because she said, uh, I, I'm, I'm either going to have to build this house or, or, quit, or quit doing this. She said, I, I The longer went. it took, the bigger the house got. And the bigger it got on the inside of her. And she said, I, oh, we need to know whether it's God's perfect will for us to build this house or not. Now, the only reason she questioned that was because it's, it's so big. But see, big don't mean anything to God. He's big. And only thing big means any to is people that don't want preachers to have anything worth anything. And that, that's the only Eric because the, the devil tries to sow that, well, now, you know, people are going to stop giving into your ministry and they find out you got a big house. Oh, go on back to hell, Satan. I ain't got time to listen to you. In the name of Jesus. Now, so we did. We, we set ourselves aside and and uh, for a week. And uh, on James chapter 1, by faith, receiving the perfect will of God. And so we did that. And the third day, uh, the Lord said, minister this house to Gloria. It's part of your prosperity. And here's what I wanted you to see. 
the, I, he gave me scriptures in the 54th chapter of Isaiah to minister to her. And I laid my hand on her and I began, I had my Bible and I read those scriptures and tears started flowing out her eyes and she just, she's worshiping God. Come to find out that's the scripture she wrote at the top of her little list in 1967 when she said, I, you, I believe today for the perfect house for this ministry and for this family. I didn't know that. Anyway, I said all that to tell you this. And he, of course, told us to, to build a house. Then he said to me, you stay out of it. He said, Don't, he said anything you're going to come up with is going to come out of the soulish part of you. He said, the thing that happened to her, now get this, the dream See, that house was completed in the Spirit. God had it planned before the foundation of the world. We're just following His plan. And it, and it was completed in the Spirit. And here's what He said. The dream began to take upon itself faith. What's happening? It's about to be manifest in the natural realm. Dr. Yan Ji Cho learned it like this. He said, I began to realize that the first thing he believed for was a bicycle back then, man. I mean, they were so dirt poor in Korea back in those days. They didn't have anything. And he said, I began to realize when, when I, 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 I believed God for my bicycle, he said, I began to realize I'm pregnant with a bicycle. It's in me. It's that's developing. True, it was true. in the heavenlies. It's developing. It's in the kingdom. It's developing. Faith is taking upon itself, and, and, and the dream is taking upon itself faith. And eventually it's born. And that's what the Lord was saying to me. He said, I don't want you interfering with this at all because this, this dream is taking on itself faith. Now, what's happening in here today, faith for your healing is working. Praise it's working in you. Now, you go off, like Glory was saying, and you say, well, I guess I didn't get anything. You just separated from the heavenlies yeah, where you can't see it. It was working there all the time. Jesus' words were working in the roots of that fig tree, and now... If you study that very carefully, you, you really have to spend some time, Mark 11, to, to pick up on this. He spoke to the fig tree. They went to the temple. They came back that evening. So it had been approximately 12 hours. Nobody mentioned the tree. So obviously... And these weren't little bushes. Those are big trees. Go get online and look up fig trees and look at the size of those trees in the Middle East. They are huge. And they could have easily seen that. They showed trees in there, and they show trees in there if you go to the right website, and they'll, they'll show the, a, 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 a dried up fig tree and they'll show you what it looked like, a withered away fig tree. Now, they came back by the next morning. So actually there'd been between 12, somewhere between 12 and 24 hours, the, the, the word had been working in the spirit realm in the natural roots of that tree for somewhere between 12 and 24 hours, that tree dried up. And you can see it on the outside. Now, I'm, I'm totally committed to the, that Jesus did that that way to give us an eternal example of what happens with the word of faith yeah. in the realm of the spirit where you can't see it. 
and it goes to the root of the problem, which is always spiritual, and it goes in there at the speed of light, and just takes that natural thing down, glory to God, hallelujah. My goodness, the anointing up here is so strong. Praise God. <sighs> Glory to God. And that's what's happening right now. Praise so once, once, once we pray, once we exercise our faith, Glory once we, re once we release you. faith in the realm of the Spirit, your faith is operating right now over 186,000 miles a second. It is functioning. It is working. It is so powerful. It's growing on the inside of you. The Word is working. It is working. It is working. Right. And as you speak to that symptom, as you speak to your body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your faith attacks that situation and it begins to work from the roots. It begins to work from the inside out. Glory to God. It begins to function. Don't cut it off. And you you get to the place where you're just wanting to say something negative so bad you can just can hardly stand it. Stuff a rag in your mouth. Go get the Word of God and put that Word in your mouth. Amen. Can I have just another second? No, or two? I'm sorry, you're through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Thank you. <laughs> uh. Remember where when Gloria read in the book of Proverbs, we're snared by the words of your mouth. Now thank you, Lord. Casting down, the weapons of our warfare are not, are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds are mental reasonings and, and images that if you allow them, they will exalt themselves against the Word of God and tell you you're not getting anything. You actually, in your spirit, you know better. But it'll start pushing your carnal mind to gripe and carry on. I wonder why this isn't working. You just said it isn't working. You just turned it off. It's totally dependent on what you say. That's right. Not what God says, what you say. You can stop what God said by what you say. You have to make a choice. When that starts, don't you dare allow your mouth to tell you what to say. Don't you dare let your mind tell your mouth what to say. No, you let the Word of you tell your mouth what to say. You tell your mind what to think. Now, I want everybody in the room to do this. Don't just sit there like a lump on a log. Do you believe the Lord sent me? Yes. Then do what I tell you to do. <laughs> I want you to begin counting silently from one to ten now. Now, out loud, tell me your name. About eight of you did it. Gloria. Now, I'm all back up again. That's one reason you don't get very far, because you don't do what people tell you to do from the Word of God. Now, I ain't got time to mess with you this morning, because <laughs> we're, we're working on something here, and <laughs> we're working on your healing and working on you keeping that healing. Begin counting one to ten silently. Now, out loud, tell me your name. Yeah. What happened to your counting? That's the way God created you. Your words have authority over your thoughts. If you put God's word in your mouth, the moment you the moment you jump just jumps out of your mouth, I ain't never gonna get this. Kenneth, you shut your mouth. You get you get on your knees right now and you repent for saying that. Amen. And you go get your Bible and you lay it right down in front of you and you say, Lord, I thank you for forgiving me for putting that that doubt and unbelief in my mouth. I I 
I repent of that in the name of Jesus, and I put these words in my mouth. I put these words in my mouth, and I choose to say that, and I choose to believe that. I choose to hear this. And don't get up from there until faith cometh. That's the way you do this. That's the way this happens. You don't sit around and, and gripe at the TV. Well, maybe sometimes you do. Well, <laughs> I can tell you what you better do. All right, tell us what you You better cut that thing off and get in the Word and get yourself well. And then be very selective about what you put in your eyes and your ears. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you are going to watch it, don't gripe at it. Talk back to it. Particularly when they come on with those, all those prescription drug commercials. The guy's walking around with a smile on his face while the other, while the voice is telling you this stuff will kill you. Really? There's no side effects to this. There's no side effects to the Word of God. Right. And when that comes up there, that commercial comes up there, hit the mute button and say, there's healing for that. Yeah. There's healing for that. You don't have to sit there and listen to that. And what's that, little, what's that little skinny woman with the little cloud over her head? And she's so depressed, and she has to take her antidepressant. Pray for the poor little thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. All depression is fear-dependent. Depression is a lie. It depends on the lie of the devil to function because depression is grieving on losing something you haven't lost yet, but you have a sense of loss. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. What are we supposed to do now? I want you to get a chair and go sit down. Okay. <laughs> because huh. I want you to pray the prayer of faith when I give these, after I give these yeah. scriptures. <clears throat> I can do that. Bring me a chair. The boss said I'm supposed to sit down. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's the way you do it, ladies. Just She don't know I can talk sitting down. <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, hey, this is perfectly scriptural. And he went up on top of the mountain and he sat down and taught them. Yes, he did. Well, feel free. <laughs> feel free to enter in any time. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to preach, but I'm going to read you some, uh, the margin of my Bible on Mark 11. It won't take very long. It, but it, it's got a lot that I've written in it. It says, you know, in the scripture, Mark 11, well, Jesus, that we were talking about, Jesus spoke to the fig tree, it dried up from the roots. The life in it went out, and the rest of the tree died. And uh, then Peter remarked about the fig tree. Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say, watch all the says now, verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that, shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, one of the key parts of that is you're going to get what you say. Yeah. I mean, you're going to get good or bad. You're opening the, if it's bad, you're opening the door for the devil to have a place to work. If it's good, you're opening the door to God to have a place to work. Uh, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore, 
Jesus said, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that, is, that you receive them and you shall have them. And then it says, when you stand, pray and forgive. That's important too. But when you pray, you take it. That word uh, receive, you look it up in the Greek and it's take. This made it so plain to me about how to receive from God. That word the re in the Greek is take. When you pray, take it. Don't just say lots and lots and lots of words. Ask the Lord for it and then take it. I receive it. I have it. It's mine. I'm healed. I have the money that I need in Jesus' name or whatever it is. My son is born again, but labors across his path. That's the key to, to releasing your faith. Now I'm going to take a few minutes. I'm going to read the notes in the margin of my Bible. Believe and say, and you shall have. Uh, I'll read some of them. Working on the image in your heart. And, and uh, 29.9 in Genesis, I believe. Or 11.3. Imagination is what comes out of your mouth that defiles your body. You know, when you, when you think the wrong thing, you're dwelling on what's not going to happen. I'm not going to get the job. I'm not going to get healed. Treat the word as seed and plant it in your heart. Sow it out of your mouth. That's what we're told in Luke and Mark. Negative words are a snare. Proverbs 6.2. Here's one I wanted to give you. Every word you speak, God knows. It says, and that, isn't that awesome? I don't know how he stands that, but he's God. <laughs> Psalm 139.4 in the Amplified. Every word he knows and, and hears, and he's, he hears you when you say it. If you, here's what Charles Kapp said about faith. If you are applying the principles, it's working. If you believe it, you believe you receive when you pray. You've got a scripture you're standing on. Faith is given, uh, the scripture is given you faith to believe for this certain thing, and this is what you're doing. If you are applying the scriptures and you're saying right, it's working. If you can turn it around in your heart and in your mouth, you can turn around your situation. If you can turn it around in your heart, you can turn it around in your mouth, and you can change the situation. You've got, uh, assuming, you know, you're standing on the Word of God, you've got the Scriptures to, to do it. It takes diligence. It takes His Word and your Word. That's the law of faith. Saying is your responsibility. If we're believing something, we pray, we ask the Lord for it, we believe we receive it. Now, it's our responsibility to say what we want to come to pass. I believe I have my healing. I believe I am healed. You know, after you, after you believe, you pray, you believe you receive it, and then you take it, you say it. It's mine, I have it. Saying is our responsibility. Faith is in your mouth. The mouth is the heart's instrument to implement the mouth is what the heart uses to get the faith job done. Yes. So you can't talk doubt and unbelief and then say some faith things. No, you get on it and you don't talk contrary to what you want to come to pass. You say faith words all the time about that situation Jesus, until it's done. Jesus said, my words are spirit. Yes, he did. And they are alive. And that's the way God operates. Yeah, that, and that our, our words are spirit. When God wanted to create, Hallelujah. he said, let there be whatever he wanted. Yeah. So that's the way we create. That's the way we get results. Are you, did you get it all you want to say? Not yet. So far, <laughs> you create. I can't read and laugh at the same time. You create the spiritual atmosphere with your words, either good or evil. You either give the angels opportunity to move or devil's opportunity to move. Faith is believing you receive because God said so. He said this, I believe I receive it, I take it, I say it, I have it. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is the way God created the earth in the beginning. It, let there be, he said, let there be, let there be. Lights in the firmament. And that happened. And that's the way we're supposed to live that way. Let there be. Glory to God. And we find out what should be by the word of God. 
The law of sowing and reaping is that way. Words are seeds. Words so, uh, swing open the door to the supernatural, and your mountain needs to hear your voice. Glory to God. The reason I'm reading slow is I can't read my writing. If you knew what was on the other side of that action, you'd, you'd be doing it. You'd be saying it. You wouldn't say anything else. What you're after is on the other side of your faith words if you say faith words. If you don't say faith words and you get in unbelief, there's just the same old stuff on the other side of that mountain. But that mountain will move. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you knew what was on the other side, of you would, you would move it. See, whatever you desire that's good and scriptural is, on the, is, is available from our heart. We've got the scripture. We stand on it. If it's healing. If it's finances, whatever. If it's children, family, there's scripture. We stand on. We put it in our eyes. We get it in our heart, and it comes out our mouth, and it brings deliverance and results. Glory to God. And Ken and I, now we're not talking to you about something we just read about. We've done this a long time and we have thoroughly enjoyed it. Faith creates an image on the inside of you. You see yourself with it. Faith brings substance, first in the heart and then in the natural. 11, Hebrews 11.1, 11, faith is the substance of the things. Is that 11.1? Anyway, this is scripture. Faith is the substance of the things we hope for. What do you get out of that? See, hope doesn't have any substance. There's not substance until faith is applied to the situation. I hope I'm going to get this. I hope I'm going to get that job. I hope I'm going to be able to have a home someday. No substance. But I believe I received the perfect home for me and my family. And you stand on it and you'll come to pass if it's based on the word of God. Glory to God. Amen. Now you may have the floor. Thank you. <laughs> now, that's, faith is the substance. Tangibility. We're using speed of light power, light energy. We're using spiritual light energy in our words and as we speak them and release faith, it's happening on the inside. Yeah. And I, I use this I illustration out here because it, it's, it's easier to, 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 uh, to imagine. It's, it's functioning here right on the inside of you, but you have to understand that inside you is all of the heavenlies. Now, I'm using light energy bringing substance. What's happening? I'm bringing something that's imagery in the spirit. It's capturing it and bringing it down below the speed of light where it can turn into material reality. Now, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. Where does the mountain go? You notice he didn't say the mountain removed to yonder place. He said cast into the sea. When you cast it into the sea, there's no evidence that it ever existed before. So what's, what, what's happening here? Your speed of light words are coming against that mountain coming against that debt, coming against the symptoms, yes. coming against this, this sickness and disease which is functioning here in this natural carnal realm, coming against it until it goes back into the spirit realm where it does not materially exist anymore. Where'd that cancer go? I laid hands on a woman and she had a malignant growth that came out of her hair down across her forehead and across her eye. You could almost not see her eye and down across her face like the angry, um, 
purplish blue looking malignant growth on her head. I said, in the name of Jesus, when I touched it, it just disappeared. And the person standing right behind me said, where'd that go? Well, at the time, I didn't know where it went. <laughs> and I, I, I was busy here. I just kept laying hands on people. And, and I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, where did that go? Well, the things that I'm telling you this morning, I didn't know back there then. And he, he began right then talking to me about th these things. I've learned now that was the mountain Jesus was talking about. And when I touched it, the anointing of God, which functioned as light energy, that's what the anointing is. God is a spirit. And those that worship him, worship him in spirit and truth. God is love. God is light, Scripture says. So when that happened, it went back into the non-natural world, and you couldn't see it anymore. It is gone. Praise God. Forever! Amen. 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 I want you expecting that this morning. I want you expecting that this morning. I mean, you expect the power and the anointing of God that's functioning in you right now. You have the anointing of God inside you. It is on you and in you. If you're born again, it, you received an unction. The word unction is the same word translated anointing. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we ready to pray? You the man, pray. Huh? Yeah. No, it's your service. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Who thought it? No, you pray the prayer of faith. We'll all Shall we stand, it. please? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We believe we receive. When we pray right now, we're taking it. Hallelujah, glory to God. You, Let's just praise and worship for a moment. When we pray, we come into his presence. When we praise, he comes into ours. He inhabits the praises of his people. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Believe you receive when you pray. And Thank you, you Father. Jesus Stretch said forth your hand and heal. You pray. Thank God. you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Thank Lord you, Jesus, God. our healer, you, our Jesus. deliverer. Thank you. By the hand of your son, Jesus. Yes. By the hand of your child, yes. Jesus. Jesus. We receive it. We receive it. Thank we receive you. it. Glory to God. There's nothing Thank you, Lord. to receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Glory Jesus. Glory to God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship and praise you. Thank you, Lord. Just praise Him and worship Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Only believe. Now sing it, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All things are possible. Lord, I believe. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Weakness, sickness, and pain, disease. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Now you just agree, yes, amen. Cancer, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Migraine headaches, be removed and be thou cast into the sea. Now you say, I do not doubt in my heart I believe what I say comes to pass. And I receive it. Authoritis, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Degenerative joint disease, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Jangled nervous condition, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. For the chastisement of our peace was upon Jesus. Be peaceful in your mind. Hallelujah. Worry, fear, for your children, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Say this, my father loves me and he knows how to deliver those that are under oppression. He knows how to deliver my family. And he's doing it right now. Now give him thanks for it. Praise him for it. Throat pain, throat pain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Those of you watching online, there's no time nor distance in the realm of the Spirit. It's right there the same as it's right here. You, you're, you're a part of this service. Just take it. Take it right now. If you're listening, if you're listening on a CD or, 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 or if you're watching a DVD, how, however this is getting to you, it is right there. It's the same with you now as it is with us here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive all things are Lord, I receive. Knee pain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Lower back pain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Dingy, dim eyesight, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Any form of blindness, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. The scripture says, All, forgive me, Lord, say that again, please. Thank you that the name of Jesus is above every name that is named. 
blindness is a name. Bow your knee, blindness, to the name of Jesus. Eyes see now, saith the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Hearing loss, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Take your hearing. Take it right now in the name of Jesus. New eardrums. New inner ear nerves and bones. Damaged ear nerves. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Bow your knee to Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Cobre ditch ke lito cumbrata ke te histe se. All things work together for the good of those that love God. You say, that would be me. Three of you said it. You say, that would be me. And for those called according to his purpose, you say, that would be me. And you are a thing. Work together now for good. Elbow, you are a thing. Work together now. Shoulder joint, you are a thing. Work together now. Knees, you are things. Work together now. Cartilage in the knees, you come. If there's no cartilage there, cartilage come in the name of Jesus. Hip joints work together for my good. Hallelujah. I love God and I'm called according to his purpose. And my hip joints are supposed to work. Glory to God. Work like you're supposed to work. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lift your knees and walk and be strong. Hallelujah. Ankles, you are things. Work together and dance before the Lord with me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See, you can, you can do this in your own bedroom, man. You can, <laughs> you, you can do this. You can live like this. This is not just one time in a healing school. No, no, this can be every day. You can get so excited about praising God, you can't wait to get out of bed. Amen. If you have a particular situation that, that appears to you to be big, then take communion every day. Get up and praise before God and go in, get on your knees and take communion before the Lord. Because Ephesians 5.30 says, you're flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. Oh, hallelujah. By the grace of God and by the word of God, and, and I, that's all I can say like the Apostle Paul. I am what I am by the grace of God. And his grace with me. That's his presence and his favor and his goodness. He loves you as much as he does Jesus. And it is by faith so that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. 
God's grace is his overwhelming desire to treat you and me as if sin had never happened. Glory to God. Treat you like you never sinned in your life. Isn't that wonderful? That's the way he sees you. And when you come before him boldly to the throne of grace and you say, sir, I missed it. I missed it. I did such and such. And I repent. And I, I take my forgiveness. I believe I receive my forgiveness. And I receive my cleansing from all unrighteousness. Amen. No. <laughs> when you confess that sin was not when he found out about it. That's when you got rid of it. That's when you got it out of your way. You got it. You got it out of your out of the out of the blessing part of your life. Get rid of it. Get rid of it instantly. You just stood there and said something to somebody you shouldn't have said. I don't care what it is. Just stop and say, uh, "Excuse me, forgive me." Uh, just hang on a second, Father. I repent. What I just told her wasn't true. And I repent for lying. I hadn't done that a thousand times. I did it twice. And, and I, I repent of that, sir. Amen. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. All else proceeds from evil. What are you doing? You're not being picky. You're being trained. You're training your mouth. You're training your brain. And you're, you're training your flesh to walk in healing and walk in strength and health. And what I started to tell you a while ago, by the grace of God and by the mercy of God, I'm stronger physically than I was 20 years ago. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, let me tell you something. Yeah, but Brother Copeland looks at me. I, I, no, 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 hey, come on, baby. That Don't let your flesh define you. That, that's, that's just what you've become. If you've become that, you can become something else. You can become what you need to be. You can become what God has designed you to be. You're not through, glory to God. And like Gloria said, don't you ever quit. Don't ever quit. Don't ever quit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lung disease, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Someone that has an, a, a very unattractive, what you call it, an ugly scar. I just saw that scar begin to go away. There was a man came up in front of me in a parking lot in Lubbock, Texas, 19, 1968 walked up there in front of me. Man, he looked tough. He said, I want to be saved. We were out in the parking lot. We had a great healing service that morning. He had a scar that began somewhere on his head. It was, it was up in his hair. And it came down out of, out of his hair, down across his face, down... I mean, it looked like somebody hit him with an ax and went down into his shirt. And he was, a, he was a big man. And he was some kind of ugly. You, I mean, it, 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 I'm not talking about just unattractive guy. I mean, you could tell this guy come off the street, man. And, and he, had, that, he had, had a fierce, angry look about him. I want to be saved. So I prayed with him, and he prayed. And I mean, you can tell he prayed with all of his heart. A year later, I was in a, another meeting, in a full gospel businessmen's meeting, if I remember correctly. And this good-looking guy, I mean, that fine-looking fella, dressed nice, walked up to me. And I ain't looked familiar to me, but I, you know, I didn't recognize him. He said, Brother Copeland, you don't remember me, do you? I said, no, really, I don't. He said, you laid hands on me in the parking lot in Lubbock, Texas, a year ago. And I looked, that scar, you could just barely see it. It wasn't all wet and ugly and mean looking. What happened? 
he got born again in eternal life. The light of God, the power of God was in him. The power of God was working. The power of God had just about removed all that scar. It removed all that ugly look and fe that, that, that fear and, and, and all of that had brought onto his countenance. And here he stood, a um, man of God. Hallelujah. That work is going on in you right now. That power is working in you right now. It'll remove every scar. It'll straighten your eyes. It'll bring you eyesight. It'll bring you hearing. It's happening right now. Hallelujah. You walk out of here today, like Gloria said, you walk out of here saying, it's working. It's working in me now. It is working in me now. Glory to God. Come on, leg. It's working in me now. Don't get mad at your body. Don't do that. No, no. If, 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 if you've been having trouble with, with a leg or, or something, give God thanks and praise that your other leg's working. Don't get all hung up on the one that's broke. <laughs> and as you praise God, say, leg, I love you. You're the body of Christ. Yeah, Jesus is living in this leg. Yeah, and you're healed too. His word's working in you, leg. Oh, yeah, you are well and strong. Come on back. Oh, yeah. Come on back. You're working. Come on back. You're working. I had that disc blow up in my back in 2004. Whew, I've been shot, stuck, run over. I've had all kinds of stuff out of me. I ain't never hurt like that. Dear Lord. And, and I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I went out, I found out, I went out in the backyard and I got two heating pads and that, that pain going down the side of my leg. And uh, I strapped those two heating pads on there and turned it up just as high as I could get it and took a sash out of, my, out of my bathrobe and tied those heating pads on there so the heating pads would hurt worse than the other and get rid of that nerve pain because at least the heating pad was just a natural kind of pain. But that nerve pain was just racking at me. And I'm out there in the backyard <coughs> And I, 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 I started doing what I taught you to do this morning. I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you. I praise you. I praise you and I thank you. I praise you and I honor you and I thank you. I thank you that my body's healed. I thank you that I'm healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, sir. I thank you and I praise you. I praise you for this beautiful place that you've given glory in me to live. I praise you for the, for the birds that fly in the air. I praise you for the green grass and I praise you for the, for the blue sky. I praise you for my life. I praise you and worship you. As long as I was praising, it didn't hurt. stop a little bit and I'd start thinking Lord I praise it and it started hurting again see it's in your mouth there's where the authority is Jesus said why take ye the thought saying see where the authority is well the Lord taught me then later why take ye the pain crying why take ye? pain is in your thought life it works in the same area as your thought life. They, they, I mean, you can prove that, man. I mean, they put you to sleep, they can cut your leg off. You don't know it. <laughs> Amen. You understand? Pain is in your thought life. They wake you up, it comes back. So I started saying it. I started saying it. This, this came later. I started saying, I, I don't take the pain, say it. I don't take the pain, say it. I don't take the pain, saying. I don't take the pain crying. No, I don't take the pain. I don't take pain. I'm delivered from pain. Amen. I'm healed. I'm well, thank you. 
I'm telling you, you can praise God to where they can cut your leg off and you wouldn't feel it. I mean it. How can that possibly be? When we pray, we enter into his presence. When we praise, he enters into ours. Oh, my, 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 my. Learn to dance before the Lord. We're going to talk more about this tonight and tomorrow. Learn to dance before the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. What's the matter with you? Dance. Scripture says that we continually praise the sacrifice of praise. The sacrifice of praise is that one more step where your flesh didn't want to go. When you didn't want to dance and you said, no, I honor him. Feet get to moving. Amen. That sacrifice of praise, when you just stop somewhere and you begin to praise God just right in the middle of the street, just glory to God. Hallelujah. Pain, sickness, and disease can not remain in the life of a praiser. A praiser. That's why David was a man after God's own heart. He would praise him. We praise and we worship. You wake up some morning and that old, you know, clammy, sweaty, feeling all over your body and there's pain behind your eyes and the devil says, you got the flu, hoss. Go call and tell them you're not going to be there. Don't you dare. The Word of God said, by his stripes you were healed. Now, it's not just when you feel like it. You say, no, sir. You're a liar, Satan, and the father of it. Reach over there and get the corner of that cover and sling it off there and you, you swing your fevered self out into that floor and you begin, I rebuke you, fever, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Fever is under the curse of the law in the 28th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Be thou removed, fever, be thou removed be thou removed sickness and disease. Say, hey, cobra, cobra, mastera, pala, babra, pedo, clap, a bed of fagel, let cafida, stuxa, sala, capafra, bana, caha, cobra. That's the way faith acts. Yeah, but Brother Copeland, I. Uh, what am I going to do? I don't have a job. You want me to show you how to get a job? I'll tell you what. When you begin to praise, your faith comes roaring up out of you. Glory to God. Faith, the big gun of faith, is the power of praise. Hallelujah. And it comes roaring out of you in the name of Jesus. And to your ears, it may not sound like anything but a weak little whippy sound, but you just...
just keep praising. You just keep praising. You just keep worshiping. You just keep praising. You just keep praising. Every demon in hell will get out of your way. And I'm telling you, your place will fill up with the angels of God. And they'll begin to cause things to happen. They'll bring new parts into your body. They'll make a brain where there wasn't any brain. I heard of a man that woke up in the middle of the night. He'd been praising God. He'd been worshiping God. He had a very, very serious heart problem. And he had asked God for a new heart. And he, 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 he woke up in the middle of the night, and there was a man standing over him with his hands inside his chest. He said, go on back to sleep, son. I got this. He woke up the next morning with a new heart. That's what angels do. They're all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those that are heirs of salvation. Glory to God. They're here right now. Don't, don't ever decommission them by words of doubt and fear. Stay with words of faith. They're working as long as you'll stay with words of faith. How many of you right now are believing God for a financial miracle? You need a financial healing right now. Did you notice that? Almost everybody in the room. You say this and you mean it. Satan, principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, take your hand off my money. Ministering spirits, go get my money. Bring it here now. I lay hold of a debt-free lifestyle. I remember what the Lord said to Leroy Thompson years ago. And we're going to do it right now. This is very scriptural. I don't have time right now to go into all the background of it. But you know I don't do things that are crosswise the Word of God. You do what I'm doing. Get a hold of that lever. I mean at the top of your voice, money! Come now! Again. One more time. Money, come to me now. Now give the Lord praise. Thank you.
I used to weigh 100 pounds more than I do now. Many years ago. 1966, the Lord spoke to me and said, get it off. And back there then, you know, I, mean, I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know anything except just what I'd heard in the world. And the day I left for Old Roberts University, I, <laughs> I mean, all I had to eat that day was nine boiled eggs. Praise God. Amen. And at that time, now I weighed 263 in um, about 19... 19- Fifty-six, long in there. <laughs> Sergeant, you will enjoy this. My first day in basic training. Old top walked out of there. <laughs> Man, our top soldier was about six four. One of the blackest men I have ever seen in my life. I mean, he was the picture of a soldier. And I was not. <laughs> he walked. Can you, can you imagine this now? Oh, yeah, you can because you've been there, man. But now you wouldn't know ugly shape as I was in. I'm standing there like this. <laughs> He walked by, he poked me in the stomach. And he goes, ha, 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 we going to let the wind out of you. <laughs> but he was not kidding a bit. But then after I got out of the service, I never did get that, that much again, but I went, I went back up to about 240 and I stayed there. I, I weighed 240 when Gloria and I got married. That's what I weighed that morning when we headed for Oral Roberts University. I weigh 170 pounds now. But God taught me. He became my trainer. And as I prayed and believed him, he sent people to me to teach me and to train me, to teach me how to eat, to teach me how to think, to teach me how to work out, to teach all of it, spirit, soul, body, financially, and socially. Amen. Ain't no use you dying no 70 or 80 years. That's not scriptural for you to die in 70 or 80 years. 70 or 80 years was a curse on a disobedient people in the wilderness. No, Genesis 6, 3 says, The days of man shall be 120 years. That's what God said our lifetime is. That's, that's, that's what he said. That's just as much the word of God as by his stripes you were healed. But you have to choose to believe it. And by choosing that, don't just choose to lose some weight. No, 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 no. No, you choose. You're a soldier in the army of the Lord. And you need to be in good witnessing shape. You need to be in strong, healthy shape. You need to be where you, God can call on you for anything, anytime, 24 hours a day. But the way you get there is you take that 120-year assignment and you believe for it. And something happens to your body, you say, no, body, uh -uh. no, 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 no. Come on, legs, you got to last another 42 years now. Come on, get with it here. Come on now, come on now. See, I'm not going by the DNA of my parents. I'm going by the DNA of my father. Hallelujah. My heavenly father's DNA, his word. I'm born of his word. Hallelujah. And not only will he teach you how to do it, the will to do it will rise up on the inside of you. I'm willing to be with it. And when I started that, I was not willing because I didn't want to go through all that it took to get there. You didn't either, did you, Lisa? Look at that pretty lady. Step, come here. Step, step up here. I want to show you all. Come here, Lisa. Look at this gorgeous thing. Look at this. Yeah. Huh? 250 pounds twice. 
I rest my case. <laughs> How did you do it? Word of God, word of faith, believe in God, never quitting out of honor and respect to the Lord Jesus Christ that provided this body for you. Hallelujah. Don't put up with a mind that don't work right. Don't put up with a brain that doesn't work right. No, no. We have the mind of... No, don't tell me, Christ. The anointed one. We have the same anointing available for our mind that was on Jesus' mind when he was in the earth on his mind now. We have the mind and anointing of his mind. Oh, you missed a place to shout right there. Because that'll change your mind. And the biggest thing you can do about that I bathe my mind in praise. I bathe my mind in the Word of God. I bathe my brain in the mighty Word of God. Brain, come alive. Memory, come alive in the name of Jesus. No, 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 no. No, I'm not going for that lose your memory stuff when you get old. I'm not going for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a lie from hell that as you get older, your brain gets where it doesn't work good. That's a lie. Science has now proven that the brain is the only physical organ that gets better with age. Now you stop saying that other mess. I'm not going for that. I'm not going there. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. Did you get anything this morning? Well, give the Lord another praise. Glory to God. Come on.